Hi there, Logic Language Learners. I hope you are all really well. I have so much to tell you because since I last spoke to you, we've obviously had the uh, the trip to Vaucanson and we've had the day in London where the students all came to London. Um, but today we're just going straight into some common problems that have come up this week with students. Not just those abroad, but just generally some problems that have come up with students. So let's get straight down to it. So the first problem I'd like to talk about is using devoir, which is the verb to have to, or to owe, it's to owe people money as well. But if you use it in the context of must, have or must, when you are talking about a supposition rather than, rather than um, an obligation. So let's explain this. So if you said, I must leave. Yeah, you are using the verb devoir. So, je dois, tu dois, il doit, nous devons, vous devez, ils doivent. To convey an obligation, a necessity. I must eat. Oh, I must eat. Je dois manger. Fine, you know, you can switch in and out with j'ai besoin de manger or whatever, whatever, whatever. Or, you know, il me faut quelque chose à manger. Fine, fine, fine. But you are using this to, for an obligation, for something you have to do. And indeed, in English, the verb devoir is to have to. And must is just something we get from the present tense of, it's actually from a, sort of a middle German where we, we get that word in English. Because if you think about it, the verb is to have to. And in the past is I must. Um, um, we don't have, so the present is I must, but we don't have musted in the past or I will must or anything like that. It's just in the present. So in other words, if we said, I must eat, this is an obligation. Oui, je dois manger. Um, if I said the bus, the bus must leave in five minutes, le bus doit partir dans cinq minutes, again, we are talking about an obligation. He had to leave, il a dû partir, he had to, so we are popping the verb devoir in the past. He had to leave, il a dû partir. But listen to English when we use the word must. When it, we're trying to suggest, I guess that's what happened. Oh, where's Luke? Oh, he must be late. I don't know. I guess he's late. He must be late. You're not saying Luke must be late. Otherwise, there's a problem. There's no obligation here. You're supposing he's late. And we're going to use the verb in exactly the same way. Il doit être en retard. Il est où? Ouais, Luke, il est où là? Oh non, je sais pas. Il doit être en retard. Il doit être en retard. The same in the past. Uh, uh, um, where's Luke? Oh, he must have gone without me. Oh, il a dû partir sans moi. Il a dû partir sans moi. But notice that one is the same French as if you said he had to, obligation, leave without me. Il a dû partir sans moi. He had to, in the passé composé, leave without me. So just be mindful of the fact that, like in English, you can use must in two ways, obligation or an opinion. I, I imagine that's what happened. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I imagine he had to leave without you. Oh, j'imagine qu'il a dû partir sans toi. All right? So the two sides of must. So, um, uh, uh, how old's Luke? Oh, he must be 50, 60. Il doit avoir, il doit avoir, he, mu he has to have. It's not Luke has to be 50 or 60. Oh, il doit avoir 50, 60 ans, je sais pas. Okay? Closer to 60. Good. So next little grammar nugget. If we use, let me think, which was the one that somebody asked? Yes. So the difference between s'appelle and qui s'appelle. Yeah, the difference between s'appelle and qui s'appelle. So um, this bothers a lot of people. It's basically this. If your sentence, if its primary purpose is to tell us the name of something, you don't need the key. So for example, the restaurant I'm going to this evening. The restaurant is called La Bodega Negra. So, um, um, yeah. So the restaurant is called La Bodega Negra. Okay. So, uh, which, unless your French is really debutant, is Spanish. All right. That's not French. So, um, le restaurant s'appelle La Bodega Negra. Okay. If you said um, the restaurant, which is called the Bodega Negra um, is located in the middle of London. So the primary purpose of this sentence isn't just to tell me something's name. You need the key. Le restaurant qui s'appelle 
la bodega negra se trouve au milieu de Londres. So, uh, the woman is, the woman's name Gabby. La femme s'appelle Gabby. Okay, la femme s'appelle Gabby. My friend, Gabby, is, has, has chosen to stay in France. Yeah. Alors, mon ami Gabi, you could just do mon ami Gabi. Ou mon ami qui s'appelle Gabi a choisi de rester en France. So, the key comes in. So, if you said, oh, a, there is a restaurant called the Bodega Negra, which is like hidden, you know, it's actually meant to look like a sex parlor. <laughs> it's, but it's, yeah, but it's, it's fabulous. It's meant to look like a porn bookshop, but it's really, really good. So, in other words, the restaurant... You know, the restaurant called. So it's when we use the word called. Yeah. So my friend is called Gabby. That's the main purpose. Alors, mon ami s'appelle Gabby. My friend called Gabby lives in the northeast. Alors, mon ami qui s'appelle Gabby habite dans le nord-est. We will use the key because there's another verb there. There's something else going on. There's something else going on. Yeah, so in other words, when there's something else going on, you the key. You don't always need the key. You could obviously just say the name. So, my friend Daniele. Yeah, mon ami Daniele. Yeah, my friends Chris and Tatiana. We don't always need... So, if it's my friends Chris and Tatiana are going to join me. Alors, mes amis Chris et Tatiana vont me rejoindre. Mes amis qui s'appellent Chris et Tatiana vont me rejoindre. So, we don't always need the qui s'appelle. We could just use the, the names. But that's how we handle called. So be very careful when you use called in general. So I went out with my mate. Um, oh, so we saw this lovely restaurant called the Bodega Negra. We're going to a restaurant called. We will be going to a restaurant called. The called in English is used adjectively from the past participle. So you don't actually know which, which, which bloody tense you're in. So, oh, we saw a beautiful restaurant called, whatever, Le Bourgelet. Great French pub in central London. More on that later. So we found a great restaurant called Le Beaujolais. On a trouvé un restaurant qui s'appelait... Now, by definition, that restaurant is still in place. Yeah, but it, it's short for which was called. Ah oui, alors on a trouvé un restaurant qui s'appelait Le Beaujolais. This evening, we're going to a restaurant called Le Beaujolais. Alors ce soir, on va, au, uh, on va à un resto qui s'appelle. So when you have a called in general, be careful because it kind of needs you to pick a tent. We will be going to a restaurant called, we don't need to go into the future, you know, they're not in the future going, you know, on va aller au resto, on va aller au resto qui s'appellera, we don't need that, the restaurant now has already got its name, okay, so just be careful with that. Good, next little problem is a versus de with infinitives, and I have mentioned this one before, this is where all of you who've done the work and are doing really, really well, your muscle memory is biting you on the ass. so, um, Ooh, what an image. So, if we had, c'est difficile de trouver, or il est difficile de trouver un prof de français. It's difficult to find a French teacher. Who doesn't just make you read and do crap? Who makes you speak? C'est difficile de trouver un prof de français. The de is our favorite preposition when we have an infinitive coming after it, which is then going to have an object for that infinitive. So I used to say, oh, it's when the sentence carries on, but the sentence could carry on in the other method I'm about to explain to you, but it's when we have some information pertaining to that infinitive. So it's interest, it's, it's difficult to find a French teacher. C'est difficile de trouver un prof de français. C'est difficile de trouver un prof de français. If you said, you know, uh, this restaurant, it's difficult to find. The thing you are talking about finding has already come. So that would be, c'est difficile à trouver. There'd be an a before you're an infinitive there. Yeah, so generally it's a plus the infinitive if you're then stopping with that infinitive and de with the infinitive if you're then carrying on. Now let's be very clear. If you had a sentence which is, it's difficult to find because it's located in the middle of Soho, hidden behind a fake sex shop, which is where La Bodega Negra is. <laughs> Fabulous place. Um, then you'll be like, oh, well, you're carrying on with the sentence. But we're not grammatically carrying on after the infinitive with something relating to the two form. So it's difficult to find because not it's difficult to find the restaurant. All right. 
Notice as well, if we had a pronoun, we'd still use a de, even though you are ending on the infinitive. So it's difficult to find it. C'est difficile de le trouver. And you might go, well, Luke, you're ending on the infinitive there. So how come you're saying de rather than a? And that's because the c'est difficile de le trouver is kind of short for c'est difficile de trouver le restaurant. So the idea is the thing that you're saying is difficult to find if you haven't already said. So I'll say that again. If you've got the infinitive, you're kind of ending on the infinitive, or if you said your thing you are referring to before, most of the time you'll use the preposition a. If you are carrying on after the infinitive and you haven't yet said what the goal is, you will use a de. So for example, um, um, uh, il, uh, il est difficile ou c'est difficile de faire les devoirs um, uh, sans alcool. It's difficult to do, the home, to do homework without alcohol. C'est difficile, uh, il est difficile de faire les, les devoirs sans alcool. Um, um, uh, les, les devoirs sont difficiles à faire sans alcool. We're using a there because it's to do... Now we're saying with the alcohol, but we're not saying to do the homework. We're not using the object for the for the uh, for the you know the, 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 the to do. Good. One more little thing. Um, what else are we? How are we doing for time? Um, but 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 what else was there? Something else I wanted to get in that's come up this week. Oh yeah, this is a couple of things. If you start a conversation, and this is just something that came up in France, if you start a conversation with somebody in the day, what do you say? Bonjour. If you finish a conversation with somebody in the day, what do you say? Bonne journée. If you start a conversation with somebody in the evening, what do you say? Bonsoir. And you say, okay, good evening then, goodbye. Bonne soirée. You use the feminine form upon departure. Final thing, I think I'm going to refer to John's question, which is the difference between il me faut and j'ai besoin. Now, I've mentioned this before and there is already a video on the difference between these two ways of saying you need something. I will pop that video underneath. You ha I have talked about them before. General rule, it's better really to get into the habit of using a little bit more il me faut, il te faut, il nous faut, il lui faut, il leur faut, il vous faut, etc. Um, with an object and keep trying to keep besoin to a verb. That just gives you a little bit more sort of, you know, um, sense of, of how we tend to do it. But the obvious thing is, and John's question was, Luke, does il me faut take a de? Like j'ai besoin takes a de. And I can see why a learner would think that, because obviously one form of need has got the de, but no, because you are using j'ai besoin de, because besoin is a noun. And whenever you've got a compound expression, a phrasal expression with a de, um, Strictly speaking, some English grammar pedants refer to a phrasal verb as a verb where you apply a single preposition to the verb and it changes the meaning. As far as I'm concerned, I think it's a fabulous phrase to talk about. And some grammar pedants refer to a compound verb as a verb which is basically, which has an auxiliary, like il a mangé, il avait mangé. But I use the term phrasal verb to refer to a bag of crap, more than one word, which is going to give you your verb. So, in other words, if you've got he needs, il a besoin de... He needs, il lui faut, no de. And this is obviously going to knock on into your grammar. So, for example, I need the cream. The example I always give, j'ai besoin de la crème. I need the cream, il me faut la crème. Now, you can say il me faut de la crème. Let's be very clear. But the de there is not because of the il me faut, John. That would be because de la crème would be some cream. Yeah? So in other words, when you say I need, il me faut, plus your word, il te faut, plus your word. So I need, a cafe, uh, I need a coffee, il me faut un café, il te faut un café, j'ai besoin d'un café. Now you can use an en with the j'ai besoin because obviously it's a phrase which uses de. And when you have verbs which use de, you can't go around using le, la, le as pronouns. So for example, uh... Or you can't run, go around using cut. You can't go around using all the normal stuff. So I need the cream. J'ai besoin de la crème. The cream I need. La crème dont j'ai besoin. I need it. J'en ai besoin. I, you know what I need. Uh, ce dont j'ai besoin. Um, often in phrase, your, phrase your French, you will often just have de quoi j'ai besoin. But, but that's another conversation. You need what? Uh, tu as besoin de quoi? As opposed to il te faut quoi? Um, il te faut la crème. La crème... Um, Qu'il te faut, yeah, and you can even use an il te le, il te le faut, you know, you can use an it in the middle of that, or il t'en faut, um, you can do both with that expression, because like I said, 
verbs that allow for a le will, will allow for an en. You know, if you say he eats, il mange, he eats it, il le mange, he eats one, he eats some, depending, il en mange. You know, you can use an en in these expressions, it's just you have to use the en in the other ones. So I hope that was a nice little bit of clean up for a few little points. Some crap that arose this week. I hope you're all really, really well. Um, um, anything else I need to add? No. So there's a massive, huge, big ass video coming all about all, all the fun that the guys had in Besançon. I'm drained. And um, 15 hours of teaching a day for eight days. Um, I will speak to you guys soon. Loads of loads of love. Don't forget to click like. Don't forget the podcast is still available. And don't forget that. Um, yeah, don't forget to email me for any grammar questions that you have. Take care.